Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, before we get started, uh, it helps my YouTube channel to get promoted. If you wouldn't mind hitting the like button or leaving a comment before you leave today, I really appreciate that. I'd love to hear what you have to say and uh, ideas for videos, challenges, uh, and uh, just whatever you have to say about the video. I appreciate it. Um, today I'm going to do a, a ring, and it's kind of going to be a solitaire, a big solitaire ring. I have this really pretty almost square uh, piece of uh, faceted quartz with uh, golden rutile running through it so it's got some really pretty colors in it and uh, I think I'm gonna make a nice big stand-up setting for it so it kinda sits prominently on the top of the finger uh, it should be pretty if I can pull it off I think I probably can if we give it a shot so uh, before we get started though I needed to thank my uh, supporters especially that my YouTube people here Thank you guys for all of your uh, comments and suggestions and uh, and the uh, taking the time to watch my videos and, and give me feedback. Appreciate those things. Um, I have a couple of new people over on Patreon, which is my other group of supporters. Uh, I wanted to especially thank Carol S. and Tricia for signing up uh, this month. Uh, I hope that you have a good time and find lots of uh, cool people and, and lots of knowledge over there. I think you probably will. Uh, but I'm really glad you signed up. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. And thank you to all my patrons for your support. Uh, you guys are uh, the ones paying my bills, so thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, with that being said, let's get started on the Golden Rutilated Quartz piece. Okay, before we get started, I thought I'd show you this pretty little uh, faceted rutilated quartz. It's really kind of reddish golden, the rutile needles running through them. I like the look of this stuff, so I think it'll make for a pretty ring. I thought about inlaying some copper on the band, but uh, I kind of feel like doing a pattern. I have a, a friend of mine, um, Paula in Hawaii, she sent me these, uh, she got a laser where she can print out these cool little uh, texture pieces. And so I think on, on this one, because of the, the fine rutile needles running through it, I'm going to use this as an accent kind of texture on part of the band. I think that'll make a, a good match with this. And we'll see how these uh, these laser cut uh, texture plates come out. I think they're one use only. This is my design idea book. I sell these in my merch store if you're interested. It's a good way to support the channel. I also think they're super useful because I never used to draw things out, but now I do uh, since I'm coming up with all sorts of different ideas every week. It helps me to plan ahead and uh, organize my thoughts and what I'm going to need and everything uh, in order to pull something off. Sometimes it, just drawing it out gives me a template too. So um, I, uh, I'm going to create a prong setting that comes to uh, four wires coming to a point right here uh, and there's going to be a piece of square wire that I've filed down containing these uh, or in, contained by these pieces of wire that come up off of the band it's going to be a double band, an inside ring here, and then an outside one that's not completed but points up towards the edge of the stone here. And this is the one I'm going to texture here. So it's going to have a texture at the top of these. But I think I'm just going to texture it about halfway up it like that. So that, uh, because anyway, you know, as you wear a ring, the bottom side gets worn down anyway. So any texture that's going to be on there probably will get worn away over time. So it doesn't make much sense to texture the whole thing anyway. So I'm going to try and do just the ends. We'll see if I can do that nicely. Uh, but uh, I think first uh, I cut some sheet in advance a little bit to save us some time. I'm going to make uh, the inside one out of 22 gauge sheet and this should be about the right size. Uh, I cut it for this for about a size 8. And this one is going to be for the outside. This, this one may end up being narrower too. I'm, I'm thinking I want this to be a little bit less of a bulky ring, even though it's got a great big huge faceted stone on top. I think I want that to really stand out from a delicate sort of looking ring. So we'll see what I can do with that. I'm not sure, but we'll find out, I guess. <laughs> so I think I'm going to make this into um, a round band first, and then uh, and then I'm going to probably texture each end of this here, and we'll see how it looks. Cut 
kind of excited I ordered myself a new file to make these into a U shape so I can get the two ends pushing straight together and then I round it out afterwards I tend to get a nicer solder joint if I do that so thank you Paula for the nice texture uh, sheets I'm excited to try them If you haven't been to my channel before, I generally use uh, almost always hard silver sheet solder. And I also uh, use a spray-on flux called Mighty Flux. Um, people ask about the spray bottles all the time. I should probably mention this. These are, you know, they wear out after a while and they become gummed up with a flux. You can, you know, if you empty them out once in a while and soak them in hot, really hot soapy water and run some water through the spraying mechanism, then put the flux back in and, re, you know, redo it. Usually you can get them to last a little bit longer, but eventually I usually just end up replacing them. If not, <laughs> if only because my students melt the side of the thing because they're not paying attention. <laughs> no names or anything. I've been known to ignite a few things unintentionally myself. <laughs> do, 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 do. Come here. Just to make sure I have good seam penetration, I'm going to put a piece on the inside too, just, just to be safe. Years ago when I was a beginner, I, I uh, had a ring that came apart at the solder joint down there after I sold it. And I was really embarrassed. And it, it probably was because I just wasn't very good at soldering at the time, and I probably had a cold solder joint. However, ever since then I've been extra careful to make sure that these you know, bottom of the band solder joints have really a good penetration through the seam. So, just to be safe. You know. But like I said, chances are I just wasn't very good at soldering at the time. So. Soldering takes a little bit of practice. Spend a little time filing them. By the way, that stone is a 9 by 11, I believe. And if you're curious, this middle one I cut to about 9, nine millimeters. I'll probably file it down to like 7. I just usually cut things a little big so I have room to screw up. <laughs> well, I occasionally have that happen. Usually when I screw up is when I learn the most though. Because I, I like to stop and analyze what went wrong in order that I don't repeat the same mistake. And that's helped me to figure out some strategies for soldering things over the years and measuring things. I filed this down a little bit narrower. It's about uh, six and a half uh, millimeters. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the texture on the other piece now. I think and. I bent this around here to get an idea about how far down I want the texture to go. So I made those marks there and we'll uh, line it up there. This is the actual texture right here. So I think I'll cut a little piece like that and then another little piece from a different part.
a little sandwich piece here made out of brass. Actually, I'm going to cut a couple of fresh ones. Those ones I used to test this out. Let's do this. Okay, let's go over to the rolling mill and see how well I did on that. <laughs> okay, we got this tightened in there pretty good. So I'm going to roll it just a little, little bit. Texture on the end there now. So I'll do the same thing on the other side real quick. I got both sides done. I actually screwed up the first one. I didn't quite get it uh, far enough in and then I tried to go back and do it again and it messed it up. So I cut a new piece. I took the opportunity to cut it uh, just a little bit narrower because this is pretty wide. So and uh, I bent it around the ring mandrel so that this is snug in there this earlier one that I made and then I put it in there like that and then I scratched a mark along there because I'm going to cut that out that section and then I think I'm going to taper it out to the corners so I will have to uh, straighten this back out and, and do some sawing so that'll be our next step saw this out a little bit. <laughs> okay, now it's time for some less than expert sewing. <laughs> sewing is not my strongest suit, but I'm getting better at it. <laughs> I'm going to go straight in here. Okay, I'll clean that up with a file a little bit. I did a little bit of filing. I think we're going to bend this around the mandrel now. I'm going to do it up near the top here, kind of, uh, because I want to keep it as round as I can on the bottom part here as I stretch it up to about the right size. is coming together here. I want it tight. And it's pretty good so far. Got a little gap right over here. I want to make sure the, the ring inside is in the center. 
I did a pretty good job of keeping it close to the same width, so I think I'm all right that way. But let's, uh, I think I'm going to do it upright like this. I guess I could do it like this. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'll use a third hand here just to kind of keep things from moving around much. So I do a lot of pick soldering, which is where I pick up a little bit of solder on the end of my soldering pick here like this. And this is one of those skills I think that people should learn. So if you're interested, uh, it's something that'll make your process a lot faster. I'll leave a link up here for a pick soldering video. The bad part about using a third hand is that the metal in the third hand soaks up a ton of heat and bleeds it off. So it generally takes a little bit longer to solder something because some of the heat's been sucked away by that thing. Okay. trick to pick solder in is uh, making sure you get the piece up to temperature before you stick it in there. It should just jump right in there if you've reached soldering temperature. I tend to jump the gun a little bit sometimes. I think probably it's a good idea to stop and examine what we've done. Stop and think about what you've done. <laughs> See a few gaps here and there. I might throw a little more solder on this side and a little bit more on this side just to make sure. go about making this setting, I was going to put it horizontally, so clearly these guys go up too far, because I don't want them to completely cover the stone, so I'll cut those off, but right now we need to build the setting for it, so I'll come back to this one after a bit. Either way, these are going to be shorter probably. So if we're going to make a setting for this, I'm thinking I want to do a, a four-pronger one on each corner like this. But before we do that, we need to create some square wire framing for this thing. So I'm going to use 14 gauge square to do that. And if you've never seen one of these miter, uh, miter gauge vices, miter vice gauge, miter, miter vice jig, I think is what they call them. Uh, if you need to make a perfect rectangle or something, it's got a grate. You just feed your wire through here. And it comes out at a 45 degree angle, so you can just file it flush. So that makes for uh, really nice little boxes if you're trying to do that. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I need to figure out just how long these sides need to be. I want them to stick out just a just a hair beyond uh, beyond where that stone is. So. So 
one side needs to be like 10 and a half millimeters. I'll cut one of those and do the angles on it. And I'll see how that looks. Just gonna clamp it down. I would have loved to have one of these when I was a beginner. It's always hard when you're a beginner to get perfectly flat edges in the file. Or at least most people have trouble with that, in my experience. What did I say? Ten and a half millimeters? I think that's what I said. end up getting a nice little edge here, but sometimes there's some little filing burrs left over that you need to peel off. As you can see, that's a nice 45. Okay, so 10 and a half, I think, is what we said. I'm going to measure on the outside edge here. see kind of sticks out just a skosh beyond the thing. So I'll use this as a guide for the next one and then I'll measure for these sides too the same way. But I'm not going to make you watch me do the same thing over and over again so I'll be right back. Okay, hopefully you can see my little square here. Or pretty close to a square. It's almost square so it's uh, I was rounding up on, on the 11 I think. But Let's see, cut myself some little pieces of solder. I don't need too big pieces for this. Let's see how that sits on there. We've got just a little extra space around the outside. That's kind of what I was shooting for. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to file downwards at a taper so that this creates a, a an angle for that stone to seat in there a little bit. So I'll file this for a while. The other thing I'm going to do once I have this uh, seated down in there is I'm going to have uh, prongs that go above the the stone here in order to hold them hold it in there, but they're also going to extend down here below it in order to set it up off of this band in here. So I'm going to have kind of a little pyramid, upside down pyramid going up, and this will kind of be in the middle. So. And of course, these will be cut a little bit shorter so that they don't make contact with this. So, and then we'll see how that looks. It'll be a good experiment. Okay, so I'm going to file this for a bit and probably file those corners too. I also filed the ends flat here a little bit, or on the bottom, I should say. And I tapered them in a little bit, kind of sloped downwards, just a skosh. Okay. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I have these little diamond burrs that are kind of cylindrical. I'm going to use that to cut kind of notches that go down inward for the uh, wires to kind of seat into so they're close to the stone. So let's go do that. 
So here's these little uh, diamond burrs. I think I got these off of Amazon. They were pretty cheap. They were like 13 or 14 bucks, and they're really useful. So let's like check into that. I use them pretty frequently. They're good to grind a groove or something. So the hard part is keeping it stable when you get started. I think for the prongs I'm going to use some 16 gauge round, which I, I made out of some 14 gauge by pulling it through my draw plate. So and I need to create uh, something that does this on all four corners and meets down below. And I want it to meet, uh, I don't know, let's see how, how far down we want that to be. Be okay. It's set. I might have to taper those things a little bit steeper. So I'm going to do that real quick. Taper these inwards a little bit more because I'm going to have to bring them together pretty close. So it's only going to be about, you know, maybe five millimeters to the bottom, maybe less even. So I'm going to taper those in a little more. Okay, I got a little bit steeper taper on it like that. So I think I'm going to I'm going to cut a couple of pieces of this stuff, probably about an inch long, or maybe a little bit longer, inch and a half or yeah, 35, 35 millimeters maybe. I'm going to cut two of those. Let's find the center. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a notch here so that I can make a little bit of a sharper bend. Use the corner of the bastard file get a nice cut in there pretty quickly. Mostly I just want it to be able to bend it sharply at that point. Sharper than you would be able to. Make kind of a V like that. Let's do the same thing on this one. That's pretty close. I want to use a magnesia block for this. What I'm going to do, well, actually, let's uh, let's solder these uh, these ends uh, with a little bit of solder to make sure that they're solid. find if you're making uh, various different kinds of prong settings having one of these softer surfaces like a magnesia block it really makes it a lot easier because you can poke things into it. That's pretty good. I'm just going to pick solder them together right there. Probably enough on there to solder them together anyway from those little solder jobs I did on the on the filing that I just performed on those. So I think I need to figure out how to get this to sit in here nicely. At about the right height that I want it to be. Make sure the angles are all right. <laughs> so I may have to do some slight changes of the angles and everything. 
I need it to be sitting a little bit further down than that yet. So let's push it down a little bit. Make sure it sits pretty flat too. That's pretty good. Just for guidance, try and make a mark about where they match the sides here. One of the things I'm going to do too to help it curve around the outside of that is slightly bend the tops upwards a little bit. Right where that mark is. Just a little bit. So it's got kind of a little upward bend. Let's see how that sets in there. That's sitting pretty good like that. So let's see if we can get that pushed in so nothing can fall apart. So this is one of the reasons Pixar is a, a good skill to have is being able to place stuff kind of precisely where you want it pretty easily. I'm going to add a little bit more right there. This one here. Okay, let's take a little look at that and see how it came out. Stone should fit in there okay. Let's try to plop it in there and see. like it'll be just fine. It goes better that way probably. Okay, so our final step here before we pickle it is going to be connecting it to this. So, I think I need to cut these off just a skosh to start with. I may cut them shorter as we go, but let's do like just a couple millimeters on each side. I'm going to file the bottom of this flat. That will give me a little bit more accurate idea of how high this is going to sit. Okay, I think in order to get this attached, it might be best to sweat a little bit of solder onto this. File it a little bit flat so this stands on there. And maybe use a third hand to hold it in place at least so it doesn't shift or anything. flat right here. And suspend both things with the third hand here kind of. To do that I think I need to pinch it open a bit. That's pretty good. I'm going to try and do that that way. So the trick here is to heat it from the bottom and nudge the heat upwards. <laughs> See if I can do it today. Okay. Well, let's see if we can get that to flow. 
Again, there's a lot of mass in the bottom of the band here. And I don't really want to remelt those solder joints uh, up above, so I'm trying to keep the heat pointed not directly on those, kind of sideways here. The setting itself will get pretty hot just by being in the proximity to the flame. So, Oop. a little mishap tipped on me. So, I'm going to let that pickle for a while. Probably going to, this looks a little bit crooked here. See that? So I can probably make that a little less visible by straightening that line a little bit and maybe filing this inwards a bit. And then just a little bit on both sides on this side. And I think that'll fix a lot of that. So, yeah, I'm going to heat it up and pickle it. Well, I think this one's going to be quite the statement piece. Let's get this guy set in here. Um, I polished everything up as best I could, and the only other thing I did was I filed kind of a narrower spot at the bottom of each of these prongs in order to create a more flexible area there. Uh, and that'll allow us to kind of lay this over this stone here. I'm going to start by just kind of pulling the prongs inwards. As you go corner to corner, like across from each other. I get it to kind of stabilize and stay in place. I have to be a little careful. I occasionally get a little too overzealous with my pressure and then I'll break a corner off or something. But... Okay, and I typically I'll cut these you know about halfway down the girdle facets. So I'm going to then file these down, kind of taper them down, and smooth them out with the Dremel. And then uh, I'll get some better pictures of it at the end. So that looks a lot like what I drew, so I'm pleased. So, all right, a different kind of, uh, different kind of setting to set some uh, big faceted stone upright. I kind of like it. I'll take some better pictures, put them at the end. All right, well, that was the Golden Rutilated Quartz uh, Solitaire Ring. I hope you enjoyed watching that one. I thought it was a good challenge, and I think uh, it turned out okay. So uh, I wanted to ask you uh, if you enjoyed the content here, if you'd make sure to hit the like button before you leave. Uh, I'd love to have a comment or suggestion in the comment section down below. And, uh, you know, make sure to hit the... the uh, playlists that I have on my channel because I have split them up into all sorts of different levels uh, for beginners, intermediate, and advanced, as well as by types of piece like pendants and rings uh, or bracelets or whatever. And if you go to my playlist page, you'll find all of those things sort of sorted that way. I think it's an easy way to find stuff that might be of interest to you. So check those out. Subscribe to my channel. Make sure to hit the video description down below. There's relevant links like my Patreon, my Buy Me a Coffee link. Uh, my merch store if you want to get yourself a nice uh, little book like this. Um, 
or even my website if you want to see some of the jewelry for sale. So thanks for coming. Happy silversmithing. Take care.